All right, well, we are at Bandelier National Monument and got our pop-up up way. Got a really nice sunset starting here for tonight. We are at Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico and we're getting ready to hike from the Juniper Campground where we spent the night last night and we're going to take the Fry Trail, a mile and a half hike down to the, uh, to the canyon there where all the, uh, the ruins are and the visitor center. So. All right, so we're dropping down into, there's a little side canyon here before you get to the main canyon on the Frijoles. So that's what we're popping into here is this little side canyon. So it'll start getting steeper here. Made it down the Fry Trail to the Frijoles Canyon here at Bandelier National Monument. Taking a quick lunch break in the shade and um, it's not that bad of a day but the sun is really intense and today we're going to have to hike all the way back up. It's only a mile and a half but you can kind of see we get a shot. You got to go all the way back up those cliffs there. I think it's going to be a little tough in the in the sun so I think we'll do all right. Hopefully the kids don't <laughs> wear out. But one of the cool things here at Bandelier is that for most of the year, there is a shuttle service. As a matter of fact, you can't even drive to the, um, the visitor center um, for most of the year. You have to park in town in White Rock and catch a shuttle, and then they bring you up to the visitor center, and then they would take you back. If you're camped up on the canyon rim like we are at Juniper Campground, that's one of the shuttle stops so you can hike down in from the campground hike down and explore the canyon here see all the ruins and then catch the shuttle from the visitor center back up to your campground so that's kind of a nice perk during most of the rest of the year but we're here just a little bit too early it's, it's mid-may and i don't think they've started shuttle service yet so maybe we're wrong i'm hoping we're wrong we can find <laughs> out but everybody we'll i mean people were hiking back up there saying there's no shuttle service yeah so. We kind of figured there would be no shuttle service. Yeah, so. we're just going to have to get More after it. We can do it. Yeah. So, all right, well, we're going to have some lunch and then we'll explore a little bit more of the canyon here and the visitor center and then we'll climb back up the monument and we're getting ready to go in and check out the visitor center. Uh, they've got a little informational movie like a lot of um, national parks have about the history of the site and um, um, it's really, really well done. So. We're We've got a little warning here about flooding. Uh, right after we moved back to New Mexico in, I think it was in 2011, there was a huge fire up here in the Jemez that burned a huge amount of acreage, hundreds of thousands of acres. And then later that summer or early fall, uh, massive rain, and they had a huge flood that, that came down this little tiny creek here and it almost just entirely wiped out the visitor center and it did a lot of damage here in the canyon, so.
So a big thing with Bandelier is that this site actually was home to ancestral Pueblo people that lived in this canyon and they farmed. They also domesticated some animals. There's evidence that they domesticated turkeys. Of all along these cliff faces here are a lot of these natural indentations in the rock and they used those to to build their uh, to build some some places to store food as well as for shelter and of course you know down all throughout here we've got kivas and religious sites it's a, it's a great place in terms of the historical and archaeological value in terms of the history of Pueblo people and, and just some of the ancient uh, history in North America so pretty amazing place So one good thing to know about Bandelier is that um, there's a lot of great access. The, the, the trails and paths are really pretty good, but there's a ton of stairs. So, and like check this out right here. This is, this is the kind of stuff that you have to navigate from time to time. Kids, yeah, the handrails are good. It's really in pretty good shape, but it's just kind of good to know what you're getting into. You know, you can stay down on the lower part. You can see the trails down over here that are um, paved and uh, and they're generally fairly level there's a little up and down to them but anyway we're back at the uh, fry trail you ready, ready? yes yeah. you ready for action yes when we get to go. what about you are you ready for action you ready to climb this thing no no <laughs> oh all right, let's go. Let's start. Let's climb this thing. Well, the girls have left us in the dust. Um, at first, they were saying that they were hot and exhausted and tired and they couldn't go on. <laughs> and uh, now they've been shouting at us from like three or four switchbacks up ahead. And, uh, you know, kind of kind of showing off a little bit, I think. Us. We're letting them win. Yeah, we, that's right. <laughs> we are letting them win. Letting them win. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll talk to you a little bit more when we get back to camp, most likely, if we ever make it back. Ah. We are finishing up here with our first camping trip in our pop-up, and um, we're staying at Juniper Campground, which. Um, is part of Bandelier National Monument and this is a really great little campground. We were able to just hike right down into Bandelier and and look at everything and that was really fun and also it has um, flush toilets. So Unfortunately has... they were down this time. There's, yeah. there's three loops here at Juniper Campground and only one of the loops has their, their nice restrooms open the other loops restrooms are being worked on. Yeah it's a pretty small campground and it's first come first serve so you can't really reserve sites um, but we haven't seen that it's a problem so we get here early to get a good campsite. All the campsites are pretty good they all have a picnic table and a fire ring and a bear box. Yeah there are bears up here and there's alerts. The Bandelier website is pretty good they have all the information about what's going on and right now they had bear alerts that said there were bears active in the area. Um, there's lots of uh, <laughs> junipers, oh, junipers around so the sites are fairly private and um, you can hear people but you can't see them and they've actually planted some baby trees onto our site so I think they're starting to they're trying to get you know some more vegetation growing up around the sites so that they're even more private. The pads aren't super level we did have a little bit of a work to get our camper level, um, but not too bad. It wasn't, uh, there are asphalt pads and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't impossible. It was a successful trip. We had a lot of fun. Definitely. Um, the camper did really well. It was really nice to have it. This is the best of both worlds. You have a nice little camper that you can sit inside, and, um, but you're also sleeping in a tent and you have all the fresh air that all in all, we really like Bandelier National Park and Juniper Campground, and we definitely plan to, to come back. And you also have great access 
to the rest of the Hamas Mountains um, just to the west. I took the girls yesterday and we went up and um, fished the East Fork River for a little while and they splashed around. Um, you can drive right by the, uh, the crater on the volcano. It's a huge crater up there called the Valles Caldera. It's just beautiful, full of little streams and there's elk in there.